There is a little bit of an old home week going on in the NBA. First, Chris Bosh gets his jersey retired in Miami. Then last night, Manu's goes up in San Antonio. Which, I mean, Manu getting his jersey retired was an absolute lock. Except, of course, that it actually wasn't at all. The thing about Manu Ginobili is that even not he wasn't even the best basketball player in his own family as a kid. He was a relative unknown coming into the NBA draft. The Spurs selected him 57th overall in 1999, and if they're being honest about it, they'll tell you that they were actually kind of trying to trade that pick instead of use it. And yes, San Antonio had a history of drafting international players, but last night Tim Duncan told the story of just how far afield the Manu pick seemed at the time. I sit at home, I watch the draft, and we pick people that I've never heard of. <laughs> yeah, sitting there, uh, Emmanuel Ginobili. <laughs> Who did we just pick? I was like, oh yeah, he's, he's gonna be great, he's this, he's, oh, okay, Pop, whatever, yeah, okay. Whatever would turn out to mean that Manu was actually a draft and stash over in Europe, that he wouldn't even get to San Antonio for three more years, and that when he did, he would get yelled at by Pop a lot, like all the time. You know how most players look at a basketball court and see lines and angles? Manu saw a canvas unfurling passes like ribbons of paint as he drove and wove and took all manner of ungodly risks. And it's all part of his legend now, but let's just say at the beginning, one Greg Charles Popovich, he of the U.S. Air Force Academy, did not find it all so charming. Here's Tony Parker last night explaining that. It was priceless to see Pop's face when Manu did a pass. Because when Manu is two pass, you have the legend pass that everybody will talk about, a one unbelievable pass, and the stands to the fans pass. And at the beginning of Manu's career, it was a lot of pass going to the stands, the last. A lot, of, a lot of passes like that. Pop will tell you outright he expected to eventually bend that kid to his will. But a funny thing happened along the way. Little by little, it was Pop who learned to bend. So much so that the guys who played with Manu actually credit him in part for teaching Pop how to adjust. A quality that has become a backbone of Pop's coaching style. Here is Pop himself explaining last night. As I went, I, I became a, a better coach because I learned to zip it now and then because you'd watch him play and all of a sudden he would make a steal to win a game or get an offensive rebound or shoot a three that was totally contested, the worst shot in the world, and it would go in because he's a winner. So. So I, I had to learn to stop going and say, Manu, geez, oh, whiz, what? Do we need that? What do you, why? Well, I am Manu. This is what I do. <laughs> I am Manu. This is what I do. Pop also spent some time last night talking about Manu accepting a bench roll. It, it was a hugely risky move, but the Spurs' second unit had been struggling so much while its starters were crowding each other. And so they asked him, and he said yes. And Manu gave up a lot with that yes, including a fistful of all-star appearances he surely would have collected as a starter on 29 other teams. But he gained so much too, and besides, he was so often on the floor at the end when it really counted. Remember this in the 2013 Western Conference Finals? Money! Or in 2017 when he blocked James Harden's three-pointer to give the Spurs the win in OT. In slow-mo, it looks even better. <laughs> <laughs> There's this pass to Matt Bonner, exactly where it needs to be, exactly when it needed to be there. This pass, though, to Danny Green is the one that convinced me Manu had eyes in the back of his head. Now, I don't care if he shaved his head or not, you could still, though, I was there. Of course, there was the bat, one of the single greatest NBA moments of the past two decades. Get him, Manu! What a lot of people don't remember, though, about that was that Manu had to get a round of 16 rabies shots after that incident, and that was hardly the only time he truly suffered for the team. In 2016, he took a knee to the groin. And if you think it looks like he's in pain on the court there, imagine how he felt after undergoing surgery in which doctors had to remove one of his testicles. Bottom line, the man sacrificed for his team for all his teams. 
Yeah, members of his gold medal winning Argentina Olympic team were in the building last night, as were so many of the Spanish speaking fans that, also, that always gave him such a deep connection to San Antonio. In fact, I could play you some snippets from Manu's speech, but honestly, the most moving part of last night came before he even took the mic. Take a listen to this. The man of the hour, Manu Ginobili. When you think about it, everything about Manu Ginobili was a gamble, from the way he was drafted to the way he played, the bench roll, all of it. And yet now his jersey is retired, and soon he will be in the Hall of Fame. That's a lock, too, even if it was never supposed to be.